Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about eco labels and their potential to nudge us towards more sustainable food choices. Interested? Stay with us. The way most food is produced is harming the planet, but we, consumers, have the power to change that. Yes, we do. Day in, day out, our dietary choices convey our implicit support for certain types of food and production methods. So, is there something that could help us choose better? Two thirds of Europeans say they're open to changing their food habits for environmental reasons and want clear information on labels to help them make the right choices. That's great, but it's not so simple. Supermarket shelves are packed with products carrying different sustainability labels. Some are issued by NGOs, such as the Fair Trademark, others, like the EU Organic logo, by national authorities. And private brands often make their own environmental self declarations, making it impossible to compare between products. Faced with such proliferation of labels and competing standards, even the most motivated consumers can be at a loss when it comes to buying eco friendly food. Camille Perrin is Senior Food Policy Officer at BEUC, the European Consumer Organization. We see that all sorts of claims and labels have multiplied on the market, such as carbon neutral bananas, or food with eco friendly packaging. Yet, except for a few trustworthy labels, such as the organic label, it remains really difficult for consumers to distinguish between products with genuine sustainability credentials and greenwashing. So, if we want consumers to do their part in reducing the environmental footprint of modern agriculture, we need to give them clear guidance and information through a single system for eco labels. In the EU and the UK, a pilot project using front of pack environmental scores in the form of traffic light labels has been running since September 2021. Based on the results of the pilot, the launch of an optimal environmental labeling system is expected in 2022. And, as announced in the EU Farm to Fork strategy, the European Commission is expected to propose in 2024 a sustainable labelling framework that will cover the nutritional, climate, environmental and social aspects of food products. Herbert Dorfman was the European Parliament's rapporteur on the Commission's Farm to Fork strategy and follows this topic very closely. A new front-of-back labelling needs to be easily understandable by the consumer, but at the same time not simplistic like it is the new discord. It needs to be public and not private-owned. It needs to be science-based and there's a need for access for everybody, for each producer, for the bigger ones, but also for the small and medium-sized companies. But developing environmental food labels is not without its challenges. Stay with us. The complexity of the agri-food chain, the range of environmental impacts and ambiguous definitions of sustainability make it difficult to precisely calculate the net environmental impact of a food product. For example, biodegradable packaging or reduced freshwater use in production does not guarantee that a product's net environmental impact is not harmful. Likewise, a farmer practicing regenerative agriculture to improve soil health can still be a net greenhouse gas emitter. So, it's important to put in place a credible assessment system to support the awarding of labels and to monitor products and claims on the market to prevent fraud. Another challenge is data-related. Green claims are mostly made on the basis of perceived impacts rather than specific product life cycle assessments or on-the-ground measurements. So, if data collection is required from farm to fork, it may put a huge burden on small producers and suppliers. Another key question before developing a common environmental label for food is how will product groups be defined? Sensible criteria are needed in order to provide useful guidance to both vegans and meat eaters. And yet, simply printing labels and logos is not a silver bullet to turn consumer intentions to making more climate-friendly food choices into real action. Here's Herbert Dorfman again. If we want to come to a more sustainable, but also a healthier and a more balanced food, labeling is only part of the game. We need food education and we need more food culture. 
So, to activate consumers, they not only need to be aware of eco labels, but also know how to read them and understand their purpose. Assuming they know all that, they still need to change their eating behavior and go for more sustainable foods. And here, many other factors play a role from age to gender, education and habits, socio economic status, price, taste, even convenience. So, a mammoth communication and education effort involving all partners will be needed to activate consumers. Here's Camille Perrin from Bayoke. Education is important, of course, and consumer organizations across Europe are doing a lot to raise awareness among consumers about sustainable diets and how to cut food waste at home. But first and foremost, we need to change the food environment so that the sustainable food choice becomes more available, affordable, and attractive. Even if labels do work, they alone will not transform food systems. So, as Camille said, a broad set of policy measures is needed to make a sustainable food choice the easiest option for consumers. And actions have to be taken throughout a product's entire life cycle, from farm to fork, combining regulatory initiatives, fiscal carrots and sticks, and information and education campaigns. Want to dig deeper in this topic? Check out Nera Kulyanek's briefing on the EPRS website. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.